Hello everyone and welcome to my poster presentation. My name is Hampus Monefjord. I'm a PhD student at the Department of Physics at Lund University in Sweden. My poster is titled Low Cost Biophotonics Platform with the subtitle Polarimetric Goniometer with a 3D printed multispectral light source. Let's start by looking at the summary. What have we done? Uh, and with we, I'm talking about me and my two supervisors, Aboma and Mikkel. Well, we have created a biophotonic setup using only cheap electronic components, using free software, so no need for expensive licenses. Uh, it's designed to be easily replicated for use in practical elements in education and for field work. And it has applications in the fields of medicine, agriculture, and environment, such as analyzing blood smears, pollinators, or crop. And in this uh, presentation, I've chosen to focus on uh, the Bombus lucurum, bumblebee, which is an important uh, pollinator in Sweden. So, is there a need for cheap research equipment? The answer to that one is easy yes. And this is especially true in low-income countries with less well-financed research grants. Uh, we are part of a collaboration called APSIN, African Spectral Imaging Network. And in that network, there are also a research groups from 10 African countries, which are all happy to be part to develop tools like this one and utilize them in their research. So let's take a look at the platform. What parts does it have? How did we make it? And what can it do? Let's look at figure one. Here we have a schematic image of the light source. Uh, we made a PCB, printable circuit board, with uh, basic uh, electronic components. And the input uh, signal seen on the lower right is connected to the camera, which is taking images of the sample. For each exposure of the camera, an electrical signal goes into the PCB and that will start one of the uh, LEDs, so turn one of the LEDs on one color. Then for the next exposure of the camera, the next uh, LED will be on and so on. Uh, after all uh, of the LEDs has been on, uh, there's one image with no lights uh, to get rid of the ambient signal. As seen in the schematic image, the light from the LEDs goes into a cavity, which is here in this image cut in half. Uh, and there it, the light bounces around, scatters, and then goes out of the system again. This is to lose any positional information uh, so that each LED can, can be considered to uh, be the same kind of light source in terms of position. Going on to figure two in the bottom left, we can see uh, the light source in real this time being mounted on a piece. Uh, that's a goniometer, uh, which is something that can measure light in different angles, basically, uh, which is made uh, of Lego the bricks. Uh, this one has uh, four motors, so it has four degrees of freedom movement. Uh, and here you can see uh, the movement of scatter angle, aspect angle, and polarization angle. Looking at figure four, uh, you can also see the yaw angle of the sample being rotated. All of these give very interesting uh, information on the target, uh, which you can use to uh, understand more what you're looking at. Figure four, you can also see the uh, strobing light source in action. Looping the sample with one color at a time. Uh, the images caught by the camera uh, can also be seen uh, a little bit lower in figure five, where then eight images uh, would form this complete multispectral image that we want. Let's look at the last figure, uh, or uh, figure three, three where the emission spectra of the LEDs are plotted together with the camera sensitivity uh, in dotted gray. As you can see, the emitted power uh, of the LEDs are higher at the extreme uh, low and high wavelengths. And this is basically to compensate for the weak in, weaker um, 
quantum efficiency or sensitivity of the camera at those wavelengths. This is to get an even exposure for all of the images or any color map. Uh, right now, this instrument is brand new and has not been done, uh, used for doing a lot of measurements. Uh, so in the near future, that's what we're going to do. Do some measurements, uh, replicating the setup, uh, possibly adapting it with other wavelengths of LEDs, and uh, also using it for some uh, basic uh, lab work in uh, courses here in the university. So that's it for me. Thank you for your time and attention, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay.